Hey, welcome back. This is Chris Clark with the Georgia Chamber. Thank you for joining us for these updates uh, here on Wednesday and Thursday from our state leaders. I'm joined now in the Georgia Chamber studio by Attorney General Chris Carr. Chris, thank you for what you do. Thank you for your team that's been all over the state. You've been out there the last few days. Can you tell us what you've seen? So few cameras are out there. We really don't have a good perspective. Yeah, well, Chris, first, thanks for doing this. Sure. Thanks to the Chamber for doing this. Critically important, obviously that the business community is so invested. Well, you know, what we've seen is devastation. I mean, literally, it's not anything like we've seen before where we've had tornadoes. Right. It is maybe a mile or two wide, maybe, you know, 10 to 15 miles long. This is 250 miles wide. This is a swath from Valdosta and a crescent that goes all the way up to Augusta and farther north. Uh, so there's devastation. I mean, there's obviously problems with communication. There are trees on people's homes. Businesses have been destroyed. Uh, concerns for water and ice and that type of thing. Or well, that's what we saw initially. We were in Valdosta on Sunday. Right. We were in Augusta on Monday. But what we are now seeing is we are seeing that this team is coming together, the public and the private sector, making sure that we address this issue. And, but again, this is unique. This is a historic storm. And so it's going to take an, an effort from this state, from the business community in a way that we hadn't seen it. And, and we're starting to see progress get uh, being made. This is not a one or two day or even a week or two week recovery. This is, we're going to be dealing with this for months and months, if not a year, right? Uh, unfortunately, it is going to take some time. And that's the common theme we've heard from the great folks at GEMA, from the governor, from you know National Guard and others that have been working on this is patience. Right. And I know that is hard when you've got a tree on your home. I know it's hard when there's not been power in your community, but but folks are coming and it is just taken so, uh, it, it's just taken an, an effort like we hadn't seen. Like I said before, if there was a tornado in one part of the state, like we saw in Southwest Georgia, right. you could dump all those resources in that one place. Sure. Here, we are looking at, like I said, hundreds of miles, multiple communities. I think we've, you know, we have applied for uh, federal resources in 90 counties. Right. You know, it's more than half the counties in the state of Georgia. So you've been out there. One of the things that we all know about power, we all know about communications. You know, we've had water and sewer problems in yeah. some places. I think right. those have mainly been restored now. But now we're hearing folks, particularly in rural communities without grocery stores, yeah. that there are food issues. And I know you've been to some food banks and you've dealt with this issue. What are you seeing out there? Well, and, and we are. And, and let me just give a plug for our food banks. We were over in uh, at the Golden Harvest Food Bank in Augusta. And to see the community coming together at a time where, again, this is a tragedy is great. There are regional food banks all across the state. Right. I would encourage your members, I would encourage anybody to listen to this, please support them. This right. is the time where we need we need to have help. But, you know, and one of the things, again, that, that we look at and that we're focused on is scams and price gouging. Yep. And so water, gas, food, and fuel, hotel rooms, those are the things that we oftentimes see. Okay. Uh, but as it relates to getting food in, we know that GEMA is talking about putting together regional pods that they're talking about points of distribution, uh, you know, working with local emergency management uh, associations to get that information to GEMA. But those are the things that we're seeing and slowly but surely, surely again, it's coming back online. But obviously, again, we have some counties that have one gas station or one, you know, a right. grocery store, that type of thing. And we're focused on that as well. And and. This isn't just a government response. I mean, you brought up the nonprofit sector, the faith communities involved. I've got business members that are giving away products, telling me last night I was on the phone, tell us where do you need the water delivered? You know, I got uh, convenience stores that are being incredible partners through all of this, opening their doors, giving away food and products. And so it really is a, we've, we've used this term earlier today on other briefings, it's the Georgia way. Right. It is. We all come together and you've seen it. We talk about an economic development. We talk about it. Uh, but we're really seeing that on the ground. Right? Well, and, and it's perpetuating that story. Like we have always said, the public and the private sector come together. So, Chris, what we've seen is devastation in the eastern part of the state. Right. You can see all the stories of folks from Atlanta, from the western part of the state that are coming. You're seeing on social media stories of people, like you said, that are bringing ice, that are bringing food. Uh, you, you know, it is you know, the Dr. King saying it's in the darkness that you see the stars. Well, we're starting to see those Georgia right. stars and we have. So we know that, again, businesses, there are folks that are generally would be volunteers for nonprofits or, or employees of businesses that they've been devastated. And so this is an all-in effort. And again, as I told the governor, I, I'm sorry that we've had some of the disasters that we've had in the past, but it's prepared our state in a way. What GEMA and Chris Stallings are doing, unbelievable. What the National Guard's doing, the governor and his team, and then the coordination 
right. that we've seen with our utility partners. I mean, Georgia Power now, I think I saw that, you know, they had nearly a million customers that were out, over 800,000 now back on. Right. The EMC is the same thing. So this is a great example of, to your point, the Georgia story, the Georgia way. Uh, and it, again, I know it is tough, it's difficult, but we are starting to see progress. Right. I was on the phone with a lot of my friends in the Southeast, other chambers, and it's interesting how we come together and have this unique partnership. We take it for granted here, but yeah. we don't have it in other states. And so um, thank you for being part of that. I want to go back to the price gouging for a minute sure. because I think businesses are doing everything that they can. At some point, some of them are not going to make payroll. Some of them are figuring out how do I open back up. They don't want to get in trouble you know, with your office or anyone else for, you know, having the prices that they've got. What recommendations do you have? What's the guidelines, kind of the rule of thumb for businesses? Absolutely. And Chris, this isn't a game of gotcha. We're, we want right. businesses to do it the right way, which is why we push out the information. Uh, but we also want to keep people safe in a time where they are uh, very vulnerable sure. as well. So businesses doing the right way. And of course, the vast majority do it. There's a state of emergency that's in effect. The governor has, has uh, issued that state of emergency. Price gouging is in effect, which basically says you cannot charge more today than you could the day before the storm, in essence. Right. Now, businesses can factor in increased input costs in the cost of what they are, uh, the price that they are charging individuals. But like I said, generally it's fuel, it's, it's water, it is food, and it is hotel rooms. Right. So we've had nearly 200 complaints we investigate every complaint because it is critically important that we understand that we get all the facts. But again, the purpose is let's not take advantage of our neighbor at a time that they're vulnerable, they're scared, they're you know they're desperate for help. Uh, let's just do things the right way, and 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 you know th that's why we have the price gouging, and, and then also again the scams. Well, talk about the scams sure. for a minute because we've already seen pop-up signs for roofing, maybe folks that don't need the roofing and the folks come in from out of states. How do folks know what's real and not real? Yeah, well, it, one is it is always better to, look, we've got tree removal, we've got debris removal, we're gonna be rebuilding businesses, we're gonna be rebuilding homes. It is obviously best to use somebody that you know or somebody that you know can recommend somebody else. But if you've got people that are coming in out of state, coming in from elsewhere, you know, my message to them is don't if you're going to come and try to take advantage. Now, how do I know that? If they're asking for cash up front, okay. if they are telling you you don't need to call your homeowner's insurance, you don't need to figure out what the policies are, or if you do, I'm going to have to move on to the next person and you're going to have to wait until somebody comes down the line. Better Business Bureau can tell you if somebody is legitimate. Make sure that they're bonded. Make sure that they're licensed. But again, the best thing to be able to do is use somebody that you know. But I know that people are scared. Yep. They are in control of this transaction. But again, do not give cash to anybody. And if you are one of those individuals coming in the state, we're going to go after you. I give special attention to those that take advantage of those people that are in a vulnerable situation. We're not going to tolerate it. So I think you said something very important, a couple of things very important there. But one, ask to see if they're bonded and licensed. Mm -hmm. They've got to show you that, they right? They do, absolutely. they got to show you that. And if it's just two guys in a pickup that want to help, that's one thing. But if they're coming in trying to charge you, be careful. Um, if that happens, if somebody is curious, hey, I think I got scammed. I think these guys aren't legit. They're in my neighborhood. Who do they call? What website? How, how do they engage with your office? Sure. From our office, go to consumer.ga.gov, consumer.ga.gov, contact local law enforcement, yep. give our office a call. Let us look into it. Yep. They're trying to put their lives back together. But again, the big thing is be in control. If you have concerns, stop, say no. Door-to-door -door salesmen right now, you don't have to accept whatever they're, right. they're offering. Be cautious, be careful, call us, call local law enforcement. Let's make sure it's done the right way. I want to give you a minute to talk about local law enforcement for a minute and state because these guys showed up just like our linemen. They head into the storm when everybody else is getting out. I'm sure you've talked to a lot of our sheriffs, our police chiefs around the state. What do you have to say about those guys and what they've done the last few days? I, I don't know that I, I'm, 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 I'm proficient enough at the English language to really express my appreciation for law enforcement. Again, as you just said, when times are tough, when people are running away from a situation they're running in, they have been operating 24-7 right. since be before the storm. 
Uh, we ask law enforcement to be all things to all people. Sometimes we need them to be a coach and sometimes we need a big brother or big sister or sometimes a marriage counselor and sometimes we need them to take care of a, of a situation where we're in a storm. We are hearing you know, stories of looting people that have left their homes in particular parts of the state and other individuals that are coming around checking doors and seeing that type. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Don't, I mean, again, lo local law enforcement, we're focused on this, whatever we can do to raise awareness, but I'm going to support the, the men and women that, that are in uniform because again, we're asking them to do all types of things from the state perspective, the local perspective. We have just got an unbelievable team. Right. Um, last question for you, because I know you're, you're busy and we appreciate you being here. What advice do you have for folks in those affected areas that might be hearing this on the radio or seeing this on Facebook and really don't know what else is going on out there? What advice yeah. do you have for folks? Well, right now, I, I want people to know that, that progress is being made. Okay. There's no doubt, and we've seen definitely in the last 24 to 48 hours, you know, the, this the team that we've got, the communications improving, uh, the resources are really heading to the affected uh, locations. Uh, so hope. I, I know this is difficult. I know yep. this is tough, but progress is being made, and we're going to continue to focus. As the governor said, we're going to see this thing through till, till the very last. You know, building needs to be rebuilt. Right. Yeah, Georgia Chamber's not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. Nope. Governor's not going anywhere. We're here as long as this takes. That's right. Thank you for what you and your team do. Thank you for being out there. Uh, we'll continue to put your resources that you issue, which are invaluable to us. We'll put those on our website. We'll get those out to our local chamber partners around the state, and we'll be here to partner with you any way we can. But thank you, Attorney General Chris Carr. Thank you for being with us. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. All right.